Welcome back. Thank you very much indeed. We're going to get my next guest out now, and I put on a new tie. I hope she'll approve of this one. She's back on our screens in the massively successful Birds of a Feather. Will you please welcome Linda Robson? <laughs> So you see, Linda, you see the trouble you caused earlier. I know, and that one's not much better, is it, love? What? <laughs> I never knew I you were such... I preferred the blue one. Well, now you tell me. I've lost Get that to a dog. Get it back Brian. Brian's a lovely animal, isn't he? Lovely, oh, isn't he? It's all right about that. in dogs here now. Yeah, well, you, but you know that's part of the fun of having a dog, isn't it? It is, Have yeah. you got any animals? I've got a white, short-haired staffy called George, and he's 11. So I'm used to having dogs there all over well, me. Well, he's getting old. You must be. He's kind of been around he's for a while. He's getting on, I know, Is yeah. he well-trained? Is oh, he well he's lovely. Animal? He's really, really lovely. He just wants to be stroked all the time. I know the feeling. <laughs> okay, so uh, congratulations on the huge success of Birds of a Feather. It's back on uh, ITV here now. It used to be on the BBC, of course, but it's here on ITV. First show got almost 11 million viewers, which is incredible. I know. These days. Did you think it would be uh, that big a hit? Because it's 15 years since it was on. Never in a million years. I mean, you obviously hadn't lost touch with the girls. No, we've been in touch over the years, but just the three of us had never actually worked together until we did the tour. So the, the tour was just like, I mean, it was the most amazing time, honestly. We toured all over the country. We stayed for a week in each place. The first tour was supposed to be 10 weeks, and then it went to 17 weeks. So we started off in little hotels, and then we started staying in little apartments, and so we were all together, shared dressing rooms. And it was just, I mean, that first <laughs> rehearsal period, we never stopped talking, the three of us. The director never got a word in edgeways, you know. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love that about you. You get a very full on. I don't stop talking. I know. Yeah. You know uh, what my nickname is at home? Baggy mouth. Baggy mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give away lots of secrets as well, because I do lose swimming, oh, and on really? there I'm always putting my foot in it and saying something about my husband, or... Because he waxes himself, you know. Really? Like, what? He doesn't wax himself, he has his chest waxed and his back waxed. Why does he have He's going to kill me. Waxed? I say, I've done it again now, baggy mouth again. <laughs> so, you're, we're so lovely to see the three of you back, because the relationship is crucial to the show. Yeah. But what's nice is now we can go back to it, and they've all changed. All their lives have gone through big changes. They're all in a very different place, aren't they? Yeah, it's no good pretending it's 15 years ago. It's 15 years later, and these women have moved on in their lives. They hadn't seen each other other for quite a long time and then in the first episode of this series Tracy's remarried someone called Ralph and Sharon hated him and rightly so she turned out to be right he was a wrong one um, Dorian's moved away and she's written this book 60 Shades of Green uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they all meet up for the first time in ages yeah. and then I don't know if you see the first episode but they all end up back in the same house so Tracy's been there on her own with Travis all of a sudden Sharon's back and Tracy's delighted she's come back and then there's a knock on the door and there's Dorian and Dorian has to move in again of course. She moves in, yeah, because she's um, had all her assets frozen. Now, this is... Uh, <laughs> the, we've got a clip to show you. Before we do, here's a picture, because Dorian can still rock the, oh the designer clothing. She, she looks fantastic. Her. She's 69 years of age, wow, and she's got more energy incredible. than me and Pauline put together. Well, let's have a look. This is a picture, though. What's going on in that outfit there? Because that's... Uh, <laughs> oh, you, you paint a beard and moustache from that. It's Russell Brand on a night out. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. OK. Uh, let's have another clip. It's Thursday night, uh, ITV, 8.30. It's great fun. It's got, it gave me a real warm feeling uh, watching again. I really enjoyed seeing you I'll guys back together on the screen. You. Here you go. <laughs> but it's, you know what's, what's so nice? And in a way, I always thought it was out of its time. You see, it feels like a real relationship and it feels like the way women really are. Well, it, it sort of is because stuff. we've known each other so, you know, so many years, like 25 years we've all been friends and we've all worked together and we've been through so much together. Yeah. Weddings, funerals, christenings. And, and you're a grandma now, is that right? I am, That's yeah. incredible. I would never I'll get said. out of it. It's grandma. incredible. <laughs> well, I still think of you two as, like, young girls. Yeah, she is, I know, yeah. No, is this true? You gave up smoking because of her, is that right? Yeah, I'd, uh, I packed up smoking, like, a long time ago. Um, uh, seven, I packed up smoking for 17 years on my 50th birthday. I was out with all my friends and just went out. Everyone, everyone that was interested around the table went out for a fag. So I went out, had a cigarette, and then within about two weeks, I'd started smoking again. Yeah. And it became, like, the biggest pain of my life because the kids and my husband didn't know. So I was having to eat oranges all the time to get rid of the smell of fags and uh, perfume, you know, breath freshener so and would, all of that. So you would try and disguise it? You, was, yeah, you were not telling to anyone? You were I used to have towels wrapped around my head. Wow. When I picked, the, like, Bobby up from school, I used to have, like, oranges in the car. Then they got to know that when I'd had an orange, I'd had a fag. Yeah. So as soon as you smelled an orange, you went to me, you've been smoking again, haven't you? So I packed up smoking. So I haven't smoked for four years, well, but I'm on nicotine yeah. replacement still. Uh, but I heard some sniffing going on. So is that, what, is that how you stop yourself from smoking? Well, I've got nicotine replacement. It's a nasal spray that you have. And um, 
when I first started taking the nasal spray, I used to go into the toilet to do it, and I used to say to the kids, I'm going in the toilet for a sniff. And they went, don't keep saying that, Mum, you're going to get yourself into trouble. <laughs> so I've so got one it? here now on my purse, and I always have one well, on me. Can I see it? Or is you it? can see it. Hold on a minute. Where is it, then? exposing myself. I always have it down my bra. Oh, OK, OK. <laughs> Close to your heart. There it is. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. so you just snort so you just up. have a little... That's I nicotine, see. pure nicotine, Jonathan. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> My little sniff now, actually. Now I don't know whether you're allowed to, are you? I am allowed to, yeah. <laughs> Calm me down. A little pick-me-up. But yeah, so you're still in Islington, that's very unusual. Still in Islington, yeah, I'm not moving out. Uh, one thing I need to ask you, and I remember reading about this a while ago, uh, you were mugged, weren't you? You were mugged uh, in Islington at your doorstep, and that would put some people off an area. Yeah, it did put me off for a little bit, but um, what happened was, George, the dog we were talking about earlier, he was a puppy at the time, and I was in bed, and I, I said to the kids, I said, can you smell a funny smell? And he went, you could smell it anyway. He'd had a little accident. Down, he'd had diarrhoea downstairs. Poor George. So, poor George. I know, yeah, I'd probably given him something I wasn't supposed to give him. I'm always giving him little treats. Anyway, so I go downstairs, and there's diarrhoea everywhere. So I cleaned it all up um, and put it into a Selfridges bag. I'd been to Selfridges that day. I'm not product placement or anything, but I've put it well, in it's Selfridges bag. a nice bag. Posh bag, though, I know, the, it was the a nice posh bag. bag yeah. Walked out onto the doorstep, and just opposite where I used to live was a church, and it had some skips outside. And you know you're not supposed to put your own rubbish in other people's skips. But So I did a little sneaky. So I was sneaking across the road to put the dog shit in the Selfridges bag in the skip, <laughs> and someone rode past me on a bike, punched me in the face, and took the bag of shit. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm very sorry to hear about the punch. I had a black eye. I'm really sorry yeah. about that, but it's a great ending to the, uh, <laughs> the uh, episode. It was, yeah, yeah. So I couldn't wait, you know, it'd be nice to find out if he'd put his hand in there and pulled out the <laughs> I hope you did. <laughs> OK, well, brilliant story. I'm so thrilled you're OK. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, and it's great to see you back on TV. We're pulling with Leslie. It really is lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Linda Robson. <laughs> Still to come after a break, Delma O'Leary will be here. James Dunn will be playing some music and he'll be showing Russell how to sing just like him. So don't go away. All right. <laughs>